In this video, we're going to take a look at the PDF that accompanies each micro-credential and how it can help you with your artifacts and submissions. So here I am on the NEA Certification Bank website and I'm going to click View Micro-Credentials. From here I'm going to navigate to the stack that I'm working on, in this case it's Technology Integration, and I'm going to click the icon. It's going to take me to the main page and if I scroll down I can see each of the micro-credentials and I'm working on Technology Integration Designer so I can click View PDF. That's going to open up a new browser window with the PDF in it. I want to show you a couple of things about that. First of all, if you hover, if while you're hovering over the PDF, this is the download button, so you can download a local copy to your computer. Now I'm on a Mac, so this is what it looks like when I try to download something. It looks slightly different if you're on a PC, but in both cases, the download will be in the bottom left-hand corner of your browser window. And then I'm going to just click the X on that. I can also print it, and I, I, I do think that printing these can help because you can annotate on the paper, but there's a couple of reasons why you definitely want a digital copy, and we're going to take a look at that. So as I look at the PDF, I see a key method and then the method components, um, just describing the PDF and what you'll be doing in the micro-credential. And then there's the supporting research. And these are the underpinnings of the micro-credential best practice. And then after the research are resources. And there are quite a few of these for the technology uh, integration micro-credential stack. These are designed to help you um, complete the work. So I'm going to scroll quickly through those. The next section is submission guidelines and evaluation criteria. And part one is always an overview question that gives your evaluator um, some background information on why you're choosing this particular micro-credential, what your teaching situation is, etc. There's always a word limit. And then the questions. Part two always describes the work examples that you will be submitting. And in this case, you're going to submit two artifacts. Artifact one and artifact two. Following the description of those artifacts is always the rubric of how you will be evaluated. And then the third section is always the reflection. And there's always a word limit on that. And then the questions are to spur your thinking on how you're going to answer the reflection. So that's how you want to look at this PDF. Now, back to that why you don't just want a printed copy. Each of these are an active link. So you can see as I hover over them, um, the arrow cursor turns into a finger. So with the digital copy, you can simply click the link. I'll do one here. And it will open up that particular resource. So that's something that you can't do with a paper copy. Um, and that's a really good reason to keep the PDF digitally as well as have a paper copy.